The second season of the Umbrella Academy may have answered some of our biggest lingering questions from season one, but it raised a bunch more of its own. Here are some of the biggest questions we're still wondering about after finishing the Umbrella Academy season two. In the first season of the Umbrella Academy, we meet the Hargreaves sibling's mom, Grace, whom we quickly learn is actually a robot. However, in season two, Diego runs into Grace again at a gala in 1963. Only this time, she's a real flesh and blood person. It turns out that Grace is a scientist dating Reginald Hargreaves, the enigmatic Hargreaves family patriarch, and has no knowledge of any of his shadier dealings. Diego urges Grace to look closer at her boyfriend's business in Dallas, telling her that Reginald is planning to assassinate the president. Although Grace insists that Diego is mistaken, she does take his advice and finds evidence of the assassination conspiracy. She confronts Hargreaves, who doesn't refute any of her suspicions, but tells her there are some parts of his life he just can't discuss with her. Someday. I hope to share it all with you. Until then, I'm asking you to trust me." This doesn't seem to go over well with Grace. The last we see of her, she's walking away from Reginald, seemingly for good. It raises a lot of questions, including how the robot version of Grace eventually came into being in the original timeline, and whether Diego's interference has changed Grace's fate. Season 1 of the Umbrella Academy revealed that 43 babies were spontaneously conceived and birthed on October 1, 1989, and that Hargreaves only managed to adopt 7. That leaves 36 still out there, somewhere. With the introduction of Lila, we get our first glimpse of what might have befallen some of those other children. Like the Hargreaves siblings, Lila had superpowers, but her childhood was markedly different from theirs. It begs the question of how many other superpowered siblings are out there, if any of them have found one another, and why we haven't heard anything about them yet. Right on the heels of learning that she is actually a long-lost Hargreaves sibling, Lila grabs a briefcase and splits for destinations unknown. Although Luther could have stopped her, Diego intervenes, admitting that he's fallen in love with her. But where did Lila go? With a commission briefcase, she could travel to literally any point in history. And without a functional commission to monitor her, she could probably get away with quite a lot. Will she go to 1993 to attempt to save her parents from the handler at number 5? Will she jump further into the future to try to reunite with Diego? One of the more poignant storylines from Season 1 revolved around the eccentric Klaus accidentally spending several years fighting in the Vietnam War. During that time, he fell in love with a fellow soldier named Dave, who was tragically killed in action. In Season 2, though, Klaus sees another chance to save Dave when he finds himself back in the 60s, this time several years before his first trip back. Unfortunately, Klaus's plan isn't very well thought out, and he winds up getting punched in the face for his troubles. Yet, despite Klaus's bumbling, he does actually manage to change something. I've already enlisted. What? That's not supposed to happen yet. Klaus assumes this means he's doomed, but maybe not. Perhaps Dave's earlier enlistment date will lead to other, bigger changes down the line. Could Klaus actually have managed to save Dave after all? We don't know, but we're holding out hope. When young Harlan accidentally drowns midway through Season 2, Vanya uses her newly rediscovered powers to lift the water out of the lake and revive him. During the process, she inadvertently passes some of her powers to him, although she doesn't realize it at the time. Later, Vanya realizes Harlan is linked to her, and that her own trauma has triggered his powers. Harlan's powers quickly spiral out of control, and Vanya is ultimately able to calm Harlan enough to approach him and draw his powers back into herself. Or so she thinks. At the end of the season, Harlan's mother, Sissy, makes a hard choice to say goodbye to Vanya, since she worries that Vanya's abilities will put a target on her back and would put Harlan in danger. Sissy just wants a normal, safe life for her son, and decides to take him to California to start over. However, the last time we see Harlan, he's making a toy bird levitate in his hand in the back seat of his mother's car, implying that Vanya didn't drain all of his powers after all. What other abilities does Harlan still have? And how will those powers and his traumatic experience in Dallas help shape the rest of his life? We hope to find out in Season 3. One of the odder parts of the 1960s storyline is the cult Klaus starts. Thanks to his tendency to spout song lyrics that haven't been written yet as if they're prophecies, and his ability to use his dead brother to perform seemingly impossible feats. Egged on by Klaus's own ego and aversion to conflict, Klaus's cult quickly winds up taking on a life of its own, and by 1963, he's amassed quite the following. Although Klaus does eventually attempt to make things right, revealing to his followers that he's a fraud before leaving with his siblings to save the world and return to 2019, the cult members mistake his confession for another pearl of enlightenment. 
Despite Klaus's departure, the closing moments of Season 2 indicate that his cult is far from over. They're still driving around in a rainbow-hued bus, picking up new acolytes along the way. It'll be interesting to see if the cult is still around in 2019, how it has changed over the intervening 56 years, and perhaps most intriguingly, how the group will react to the return of their prophet, still looking exactly the same as he did when he disappeared in 1963. When the Hargreaves siblings arrive back in 2019, they're shocked and relieved to find both their father and their previously deceased brother Ben are still alive. But their excitement is short-lived, when neither Reginald Hargreaves nor Ben seem to have any idea who they are, nor what the Umbrella Academy is. This is the Umbrella Academy. Wrong again. This is the Sparrow Academy. The name change is mystifying, since the Umbrella Academy was named for the Umbrella Factory where Hargreaves set up shop shortly after arriving on Earth. He was still operating out of this same Umbrella Factory in the 1963 that the Hargreaves siblings departed before jumping to 2019. So it's curious that the Academy doesn't bear its name. Could someone else have named the Sparrow Academy? And if so, what is their role in the organization? Is Hargreaves still in charge, or is he now reporting to someone else? And what significance does the name Sparrow hold? We can't help but think about how Harlan ended the season using his powers to levitate a toy bird. Coincidence? We'll see. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite Netflix shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.